All right. Welcome, everyone. Today, we have one more special guest. She's been featured on TEDx, NBC, CBS, ABC, and much more. She's a branding and Instagram strategist, best-selling author, TEDx, TEDx speaker, and the founder of Unforgettable by Saba. Of course, we have Saba Ali. How's it going? I am doing great. Super, super stoked to be on here today. Yes, my pleasure, Saba. So, let's, uh, I mean, lately, everywhere I look, it's like I mm -hmm. see you when I got uh, TV stations, TEDx. I, I heard your talk, which was fantastic. So, how this was not overnight, right? You didn't just go suddenly, now you decided to go on all these TV stations and all that. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's kind of go go back a little bit. Yeah, so I actually first got into, you know, entrepreneurship and this crazy world when I was 19 years old. And it was funny because I was in college. And at the time, like I was interested in entrepreneurship, but by no means did I ever try to like start a business or anything. So um, I was a sophomore, I was 19 years old, and I went to go listen to a speaker just for extra credit for one of my classes at my university. And let alone did I know that he was an entrepreneur building up a business, throwing events, and he was looking for interns. So I was like, oh, this is super cool. I like what he's doing. Let me just like learn more about what it is, you know, that he's doing. So long story short, I interned with him, got exposed like to this entire crazy world of entrepreneurship, and I started to work alongside his company. So I started to do a lot of branding, marketing, PR, media, and worked with like big influential people like Kevin Harrington, John Lee Dumas, Jeff Hoffman. And I got to go to all of these like cool events, like red carpet premieres events. And what I was doing was I was documenting the whole thing on my social media. So I was sharing pictures, doing stories, videos, and let alone back then, I didn't know I was building a brand as I was doing it, but I was because I started to burn myself as that college, you know, entrepreneur that was, you know, going about and kind of figuring out this crazy world of entrepreneurship. So fast forward a little bit when I was a junior in college. I was like, okay, I kind of want to build up my brain even more. So what can I do to really like kind of get myself to the next level? So that's when I decided to write a book. <laughs> so I, I wrote a book and I made it the goal to do it in 30 days about my college journey and principles that I use every single day to be really successful in the field of entrepreneurship, but then also, you know, focused as being a college student at the time. So um, I wrote that book, I hit bestseller with it, and then I used that to leverage myself to get on different media features. Um, so that was kind of like the first thing that really launched my brand. And as I started to do that, you know, I continued to document, share my story, and people started to follow me, and I started to build an audience that way. Um, and then going into, you know, my last year of college, I actually graduated about a year ago now, um, people start to ask me, like, how are you building up an audience? Like, you're doing it so well with Instagram, with pictures and videos. Like, can you help me? Um, so that's kind of when I started to, you know, build my coaching consulting business where, you know, focusing on teaching people how to use their story to build up a brand and audience online. Um, but long story short, you know, I did all of that. And I realized throughout the entire process that I have a really amazing story. Um, you know, before I got into entrepreneurship, when I was in high school, I had a really low self-esteem. Um, I lost my mom when I was 15. I was in a terrible four-year relationship, so I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until I met my mentor, Brandon, who kind of showed me that I was able to do so much more than, you know, what I thought I could do. Um, so for me, I knew that I wanted to speak and share my story. So I started to focus on getting speaking engagements, you know, leverage my brand and everything I did previously. Um, to land myself on TEDx. So um, that kind of comes to now here today. I've, I've given two TEDx talks so far. Yeah, I've been on different media publications, but pretty much teaching people how to use their story and create a message that's so much greater than, you know, what it is that they're currently doing. That's so incredible. So the book that you said you wrote it in 30 days, was that was enrolling in confidence? Yeah, yeah. So I... Yeah, so that was um, going into my junior year of college. And one of my other good mentors, Laura Peterson, she actually previously had written a book and she challenged herself to write in 30 days. And at the time, I was like, I don't know if I can write a book. I was blogging a lot and I've always been good at writing. And I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I will.
want to try it to see if I can. Once again, everything that I do, I always document it and it make mm-hmm. my audience feel like they're a part of, you know, going along with me in the journey. So I was literally like doing lives. I was putting out updates on me, you know, writing chapters in my book and I put it live out there. So then also, you know, I had to hit the goal of writing in 30 days because if I didn't, then I let my audience down. Right. So um, I did that. Yeah. I think I actually wrote it in like three weeks because one week for editing and sending it out to, you know, editor to proofread everything um, and then putting it up on Amazon. But yeah, that entire process was super hectic, but such a great experience for sure. (laughs) Yes. And then you put it on up on Amazon and it became a, a bestseller. And so did you ask anybody uh, for help? You just listed on Amazon by yourself? Yeah. So Laura, who was kind of helping me through the process, she kind of um, helped me in, you know, putting the book on Amazon and kind of the entire strategy behind it. Because for me, I hadn't ever sold anything on Amazon. So I didn't even know how to like upload my transcript and like my manuscript and stuff like that. And like the cover and all that. So yeah, she's kind of helping me through the process. Um, but you know, throughout the 30 days, I was building up hype for the launch of my book. So when I did launch it, you know, I already had so many supporters because I was showing them the entire process of me writing this book. So they felt like, you know, they were a part of the journey. So that's what I always say, you know, to other individuals that build up their brand doing some sort of a launch, like make it public and show the audience what it is that they're doing and that you're doing because they like to see, you know, the behind the scenes of everything. Yeah, I I really like that. And then talking about making it public and showing the behind the scenes, you you went live uh, for a full year every single day. Is that right? Yeah, so that was um, for my senior year of college. I documented every single day my senior year. So I think it was like, 267 days straight and the reason that was because at the time I was you know building up my business and making it really sustained so when I graduated college like I wouldn't have to go work a job which I did do successfully Mm -hmm. but also the reason why I wanted to do that was because I wanted to really blow up my brand Um, because it was the last year I was a college student and I branded myself as that college entrepreneur so I knew you know if I documented every single day for one People would love to see the journey, like the behind the scenes of what I'm doing. But then number two, I would get a lot of attention. So a lot of people with an online space, you know, there's everyone's doing the same exact thing. Like there's other people that have podcast shows that are brand strategists, but what makes you different? And for me, I found out, you know, in order to build a well-sustained brand, it has to do with branding, positioning, and attention. So I knew if I did videos every single day and like did reach outs and got featured on different publications because of this, more people would follow me. Um, and that's what I did. It was definitely hard. <laughs> there was times where I didn't want to go live because at the same time I was trying to get through my classes. Um, I graduated with two uh, majors. So I did that within like a four year time frame. So yeah, it was definitely quite a journey for sure. <laughs> So what are those two majors? Yeah, so I graduated um, with apparel merchandising and design, so fashion and then business management. And that was kind of the route of entrepreneurship. Wow. So apparel merchandising, does that mean you can design, like build your own uh, apparel brand? Yeah, so pretty much the the portion that I focused on within that major was like the merchandising aspect. So that's more so like visual branding for like mm-hmm. um so yeah i the reason why i did that major was before i was really interested in fashion and i still am i love fashion um my entrepreneurial spirit came from where i wanted to become a fashion designer and like open my own clothing store um which may be something i might be doing like well in the future but that really wasn't that much of my focus um i found that was more so a hobby for me so that's kind of why i did that major but you know still learned a lot from it for sure Super cool. So uh, why is branding important to you? Yeah, so people always ask me this. And branding is literally like the foundation of any successful business, person, agency, whatever that is. Because like your core values, mission, and statement is pretty much what, you know, people get attracted to. If you're front end selling your product or service, people don't actually buy like your actual product or service. They buy from like the individual 
-hmm. or, you know, the message that's behind that business or that brand. Because I like to say it as if, um, like Nike, why do people buy Nike? It's because of like the message, just do it very motivational, inspirational, people can connect with it. The actual product, like the actual shoe itself or the t-shirt, um, it's probably like quality wise, the same as any other like t-shirt out there that's mm -hmm. similar within like the sporting niche, right? But people don't actually go and look into like, okay, what's, you know, this shoe made out of, like what's the fabric made out of that t-shirt? Like they don't look into that um, because it's the brand. So I always say like when you're going out there building a business or building up your own like personal self, always focus on building up your brand as you're going through it. Branding is not an afterthought. People think it is and once they build up a business, they're like, okay, now I need to brand myself. And something that you should be doing before, during, and continue to do as you're building up a business. Very good. So you you seem to be a, a branding expert because uh, you have done it with yourself. So what tips do you have to people that want to brand themselves, put themselves out there as a brand? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I can go into such detail, but pretty much like, first of all, a lot of people know exactly what branding is. So like what I said, I was saying earlier, branding is all about identity, positioning and attention. So identity meaning like who you are as an individual, what you hold yourself as. So people know me as Saba Lee and you know, my brand is unforgettable. So teaching people how to be unforgettable within their business, their lives and their relationships. So they truly see fulfilled in what it is that they're doing. Like that's my brand message and my statement. What it is that I actually do is I teach others, entrepreneurs and business owners to build and scale their brands online so, you know, they can generate income and make a greater impact. So that's my identity. That's who I am as an individual. Um, and then positioning meaning is how my audience sees me as. So within the online space, within social media, I create a lot of content on like I'm on media features, I'm speaking on stages. So the way I'm positioning myself as the audience sees me as a credible figure because I've done all of these things. Um, and then the third thing is attention. So like you can be doing all these things, but if no one's following you and you're not making like a pattern disrupt within like the social media space, it's going to be really hard for you to stand out. So for me, I found one way to get attention is by getting maybe features, landing myself on different TV stations, doing TEDx talks, but it's one step further than that. Um, you can be doing all of those things, but if you don't know how to properly leverage that within your actual brand to once again, position yourself as like credible figure, um, it's going to be hard for you to, you know, kind of stand out. But if someone's, you know, listening to this or watching this and they're just starting out, I really focus on creating content and documenting what you're doing because that's what I did. And people love consistency because once again, if you just show up one day out of the week um, for like a few weeks and you stop for a few weeks and you show back up, um, people like they're going to forget about you because there's so many other people that are on the high and rising within the social media space. So, yes. um, you know, it's all about just creating content and being consistent about it. Very good. And then uh, a lot of people listening are probably thinking, uh, I would like to be on TV as well. Just no TV station came looking for me. And that's mm -hmm. not exactly how it happens, right? TV stations don't go out looking for you. Is that right? Yeah. So, no, people think, so people think with like media features, um, they're going to come to you. That like rarely happens unless mm -hmm. like you're a high end top celebrity. Um, because once again, the media stations, they're so, so busy with, you know, getting different type of, you know, releases and doing their own shows and whatever that may be. So it's like, yes, they're looking for stories and ideas, but they're not actively going on social media and doing that. Like that's not their job. So for me, like I knew for one that, I could easily get on local stations, which is what I started off with because for one, like at the time I was a college student and I had a good story, I wrote a book. So also at the time, I'll give like a little example of how to actually land yourself on media features, which not many people know how to do. Um, like I literally just sent them an email and I was consistent with it. But the reason why I landed my first media feature was I was, you know, going on there to talk about tips any college student can use to start a successful, you know, school year. Um, I wrote my book in March of 2017 or 2018, 
but I didn't land my first media feature until like August of 2017 or 2018. I can't remember the years right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was like still like five months away. And the reason why I waited was because if I pitched them in March, um, school was ending. So that was a story that they wouldn't really use. But school restarts in August. So I pitched it to them, them knowing that, you know, at the time frame of the community, that would be something that they'd actually, you know, use for their station. So once again, it's all about how you're positioning yourself and put, pitching yourself to these different stations too. Uh, exactly. And then after you go to the first one, on your second one, you put on the pitch that you were just featured on the previous one. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So once you get one, it's pretty much just like a repetition and you just keep leveraging that because yeah, if you're, you know, seeing another one, the new stations, like sometimes they compete. So they want, you know, the better story too. And as you're, you know, growing and doing more things, they want to have interesting features for sure. So you start, you started very young at the age of 19 and you were already an entrepreneur. You were in college. So does that mean you were raised by a very entrepreneurial family? No. <laughs> no, 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 not really. Um, no, basically, uh, it was pretty much just like, yeah, I'd go to college and get a job. But for me, it was always like I wanted to do something more. Um, and like what I said earlier, like I always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit, but I never thought that I'd actually go out and create something. Like I didn't think I'd be a speaker and, you know, doing TV shows and publications and stuff like that. But once again, like when I met my mentor when I was 19, like he showed me I could be doing so much more. So for me, like my driving factor is all about showing others that they can be doing so much more. So this is kind of something that like, I didn't know I really had within me, but if once again, I didn't meet my mentor, I don't know what I would be doing. Like I probably wouldn't be doing this at all. So I always tell people like go to different opportunities, go to events because you never know who you're going to meet and how, you know, that can lead you to something, you know, so much more greater. Nice. And, and uh, recently you had a TEDx talk and I, I heard that TEDx talk in which was fantastic. And especially to me listening to that because uh, you mentioned the story of your mom and that happened to me uh, with my dad. The only difference was it was mine was only two months ago. So w- when I heard that, it was kind of like uh, it hit me harder. But when, when you were on stage, you were felt like, I mean, it looked like you're so at ease, so comfortable inside. Were you really just like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. So I think the one that you watched was my first TEDx talk I gave back in September. I had been practicing that talk um, for a long time. So I knew it pretty, you know, by heart. But yes, I was because honestly, like being completely honest before that I'd spoken on numerous stages before, but you know, every time I'd still get really nervous and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I stepped on stage for that TEDx talk, I was so, so calm because for one, I knew, like I knew my story, but then the number two, like the idea that I was sharing with the audience, I knew that they would find beneficial and use in their own lives. So for me, like it was my job and duty to show them just by sharing my story how like coming from such like hardships and adversity that they can, you know, acknowledge that within themselves and turn their life around. Um, so for me, like by just acknowledging, knowing that when I just walked on stage, it was just more so excitement of me being able to give my talk. And that was like the first TEDx talk I did too. And that was a goal that I had, you know, last year of giving one. So for me of actually landing that and doing it and follow through, um, it was a big, big accomplishment for me for sure. Nice. You mentioned your goals a couple of times it, for you to be able to, uh, I guess, fulfill your goals or your dreams. Does that mean you write them all down? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love goal setting. Um, so yeah, I do various types of goal setting. Like I have goals set for like the next like five to 10 years. I have my yearly goals. I have my monthly goals and my weekly goals and my daily goals. Um, and the reason why, you know, I always tell people to write down goals to it is because you if you don't write them down you don't know where you're headed like you might have a vision mission in your head um but it's so much more real to write them down actually physically you know write it off because once again if you're in entrepreneurship and like you're focusing on building your business there's so many different parts um that you have to be attentive to and if you don't write down your goals it's going to be hard for you to like for one stay productive and actually reach them 
Um, but then number two, it drives you to continually doing more. Um, I see a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, like they, they kind of reach this plateau and they kind of just stop and they don't really see what more they can be doing. So when you write out like your yearly goals, you actually see like a vision of where you're headed as you're going through the process. Because once again, like entrepreneurship, it's not just like, you know, speaking on stages and all successes. There's still like hard times too. Like it's a roller coaster. So once again, when you're going through that process, you're like, oh my gosh, it's so hard. I don't want to do it. Just go back and look at your goals because there's a reason why you started. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, most of the audience listening to this are entrepreneurs. So they know that exact roller coaster, although that's mm -hmm. not really what we see in all social media, right? We see the nice things, but we know it's like going up, going down, always very, very crazy yeah. ride, which kind of makes it more exciting too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I always say that entrepreneurship is just a journey. Like when you hit one goal, that's like a success. But just mm -hmm. like you're just starting out. Like every time I hit one of my goals, I'm like, this is just the beginning. Like there's so, so much more. So like, yeah, going back to having that vision, um, that's something that's super, super um, powerful to have. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like when you're starting out, you might not know exactly what it is that you want to be doing, but continually like experiencing and trying different things that's the one you're going to run into that one thing that you truly want to do because yeah, like once again, entrepreneurship can be scary. Like there, there's going to be a lot of times that you're going to fail and, you know, go through the process. But like, yeah, once again, it's all just a learning experience. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you, you mentioned it's all about the journey because that's one of my favorite things that Gary Vaynerchuk talks mm -hmm. about is like, F the destination, live yeah. the journey, right? Appreciate the journey. And that's, that's what it is all about, the yeah. journey. So a lot of people forget that. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I, I completely agree. And yeah, I love Gary V. I mean, yeah, because if you think about it, when you do reach like your destination, like then what? That's it, right? Yes. You really enjoyed it because you were actually working towards it. And, you know, as you're working towards it, you help, you know, all of these different people. So yeah, once again, like it's always just making those goals get higher and higher and higher as you start reaching them. So since you have your goals, goals all written down, if I were to ask you, what are your plans for the future? You know that answer easily. And a lot of entrepreneurs uh, get a little bit tongue twisted when you ask them, what are your plans for the future? But mm -hmm. uh, what are your plans? Yeah, totally. So this is so exciting because I was actually just uh, talking to one of my coaching students about this and I'm already planning like um, my major like 2020 plans for sure. So, you know, this year it's a lot about focusing on helping entrepreneurs and business owners, you know, build and scale their brands. But one of my other focuses this year is getting on a lot more um, stages to speak. So um, I don't want to quite, you know, announce what I have planned for 2020, mm -hmm. but it has to do with more than just coaching, consulting. Um, recently I, I launched one of my programs where I got like 10 people to go through the process of teaching them how to create brands that were newsworthy and not just on social media. Because once again, I believe the thing that I'm creating and a lot of other people are creating within the online space are actual like messages that need to be seen with greater audiences. So for me, one thing I realized once again is social media is great, but it can only do so much. And for me, I want to focus on actually having in-person interactions with people. Um, so like a few years, you know, down the road and next year and everything like that, it's going to be focusing more on like, um, you know, speaking events um, and along the lines of that. So that's kind of, you know, where I'm headed, but I don't want to say too much quite yet. <laughs> cool. So you'd rather be on stage all over the world than, than doing your uh, consulting and, uh, for right now, um, Unforgettable by Saba, that is, that is your business. That's your consulting business, right? So what exactly can people uh, expect from that? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, yeah, if anyone, you know, is needing help with branding, strategy, they don't know, like, what their message is, they're having a hard time building up an audience, you know, selling their products, whatever that may be. Basically, I coach and consult people like through the process. So once again, like people struggle with branding because they don't know what it is. For me, everything that I've done, it's organically from my brand. I don't run ads whatsoever. 
Um, so it's pretty much teaching people, okay, like uh, once again, who they are as an individual, what their brand message is, their story. Um, creating content actually shares a story through the entire process. Um, but then also, you know, taking it up the next level, landing yourself on speaking engagements, different media features and everything along the lines of that. But um, people struggle with this sometimes, especially like business owners and entrepreneurs, because they're so focused on like, um, like the advertising, marketing and selling portion of it all. So they kind of neglect the branding aspect. So for anyone who feels like, for one, you know, they have a business brand that's kind of struggling, they're not getting attention. Um, branding is probably something that you're lacking. But then number two, a lot of entrepreneurs, they're at this point where they have a well-sustained business, but they want something more. They want to go out and speak and be motivational, inspirational, want to build up their own personal brands. I love working with personality brands because once again, it's all about the story. So um, yeah, if you're a personality brand, you're an entrepreneur, you want to actually create a message that's greater than yourself and you need help. Yeah, just let me know. And I'd love to you know help you through the process. So. Very good. And where can these people that are looking for that help, where can they find you? Yeah, so you can shoot me an email at Saba at SabaOli.com. And then I'm on Facebook, just Saba Ali and Instagram, the Saba Ali. And I'm active, really active on both. So if you just shoot me a message, yeah, I'll, I'll for sure get back to you. Awesome. I'll also have that on the show notes. And just for those of you uh, that are taking notes right now. Uh, Saba is spelled S A B A H and Ali is A L I. Mm -hmm. All right. Saba, thank you very much for your time and these golden nuggets. I hope people appreciate them and um, I thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for subscribing to Fail Fast Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a review and visit failfastpodcast.com for show notes, Quinn's social media, or even to tell us your story.